So Miles Warren, and um, I don't know if, if does Morris Marnie want to come up as well? But I've got them down as a a double act or. <laughs> Good morning and welcome. You go first. Oh no, another side. <coughs> Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Well, I don't have a lot to say, just a couple of points. One about the, uh, the use that the, uh, the place has been put to, and uh, a, a little comment about the costs. Shortly after the uh, February 2011 earthquake, I asked VBase, the people who had been operating the town hall for you, for some information about what uses it had been put to in a typical year. They came up with the figures for the whole of 2010 because despite the September earthquake, the complex had continued in full operation for all of that year. So therefore, the figures were as up to date as possible. They showed that a quite amazing range of functions had been held there that year, a much greater variety than most of us would suppose. And it is not unreasonable to assume that it would have represented a typical year's operation in the place. The list provided by VBase shows that in 2010, all the following kinds of events took place there. Breakfasts, cocktail parties, concerts, conferences, demonstrations, product launches, exhibitions, gala dinners, graduations, meetings, seminars, the big sing, school prize givings, school balls, theatre performances, and a wedding. There was, in fact, overall a grand total of 316 bookings in that one year. Not very far short of one a day. Uh, this is a bit of a repeat of what you've had, I think, but many of the uses to which the town hall is put are functions having large numbers of participants who need to be prepared and organised elsewhere in the premises before taking their places and turns on stage. Such functions, whether in the auditorium or the theatre, most of the rest of the complex is often required. Those situations arise when the place is hired for graduation ceremonies, schools music festivals, the big sing, schools prize givings, and so on. These are all regular annual functions. So just retaining the auditorium and giving it a large new entrance for you in place of the theatre will not meet the needs of those customers at all. Nor will it provide any for any of the 155 organisations every year who hired the James Hay Theatre. It is certainly true that the Town Hall enjoyed a hugely extensive range of uses in any given year, far more than just orchestral concerts. And although undoubtedly much of its worldwide reputation is due to the superb acoustics of the auditorium, <clears throat> what it has meant and still means to the people of Christchurch is that it fulfilled our need for a grand place to gather and especially to enjoy all manner of community functions. We now have that need more than ever, and every effort must surely be made to restore our favourite gathering and entertainment building to its former glory. And as to the cost involved, I really must remind you and all the media that A, the payout of the town hall's insurance money will not be a cost to the city. 
Prior to the quakes, the council had already committed to spend at least 16 million upgrading the complex. So therefore, the cost of the city of restoring the whole complex will actually only be about 40 million more than was originally intended for the upgrade. That's my short little comment. So do we want to have questions um, now or, or hand over to you, Sir Miles, first and then have a double act? Or well, Shall I, I hand over to you? I'll hand over to you. Much, much to say, and, and I haven't written anything out. In fact, I could only say I'm thoroughly disorganised. Um, <laughs> um, when, the, when Sir James Hay led the campaign to build the, a, a town hall, his main contention was that the four main centres, Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch and Dunedin, Christchurch was the only city with no town hall, no auditorium for civic events, festivals, large-scale performances and so on. The city only had the inadequate civic theatre, which most of you won't remember, and the King Edward barracks. Um, mm. You can imagine a, uh, a concert in the King Edward barracks uh, in that black hole if it rained, you couldn't hear a thing. <laughs> um, Morris has covered the, uh, um, the uses of the, the, of the town hall itself. Um, basically, the auditorium has become the place where we gather to enjoy and celebrate the life of the city. It has become our living room. Um, it's worth remembering that the James Hay was first designed as a theatre for drama, for speech, not for music. It was fully used for lectures, speeches, conferences, uh, and as, acts as a conference centre. At the time, the J.C. Williamson, um, at that time, J.C. Williamson had abandoned the Theatre Royal but now it has been splendidly restored. I should say that we bought, a group of us bought the um, Theatre Royal for $160,000. Um, mm, thank goodness. And a long struggle to... to uh, so... Um, that would have been lost too. Theatre has quite properly moved to the Theatre Royal. Quoting the words of the executive summary, the James Hay will become a mid-sized auditorium for classical music and a mid-sized flat floor contemporary music venue for 500 to 600 seated and 1,000 people standing. So the, the James Hay will be changed from a uh, hall designed for speech with a dry acoustic to an acoustic for appropriate for um, musical uh, events. I think that's all I have to say, unless you've... No, I'm sure that people have got questions. Yeah, Ali. I ask this with the greatest of respect, but can I uh, get your opinion on the acoustics that we hear so much about? And I do understand the uh, position that has put the world-class, exceptional, amazing acoustics. Do you think that in this day and age with the technology we have, that could be recreated? Well, um, the Auckland Town Hall attempted to do that, mm -hmm. to do it uh, um, uh, not by the space itself, and it proved to be a total disaster. The Auckland Town Hall, the Auckland, um, what's it now called? The Centre. Yeah, centre. Um, the orchestra refuses to play there. Well, it hasn't been done so far. I, I perhaps should say that the um, generator of the, well, the original stimulus for, for the design of the Christchurch Town Hall um, was uh, the, um, oh, mine's gone a blank, um, the great concert Albert hall. hall. The Albert Hall in, in um, London. And um, I only went, went there once. This was well before the, the thought of a town hall in Christchurch. And um, uh, sat high up in the galleries and 
to, to hear that great space uh, was just uh, astonishing. Um, I took my, my mother came to the opening of the um, uh, Christchurch Town Hall and in those days uh, Christchurch had no resident orchestra. The uh, um, Wollstone Brass Band produced the, the, in the, those were the days of the big mass choirs. Um, I tried to persuade the organiser of the concert that we should have some, at least one composition that drove the hall to its full capacity and volume, but um, unfortunately it didn't do so. But when we came to the end of the concert, we, they, there was a full choir. Um, they sang, we sang God Save the Queen. Uh, and the first, verse, the first verses were uh, at um, uh, um, standard forte, but the second verse they gave it fortissimo, and um, it was the most. You know, it was the first time we'd heard this great space. And my mother turned to me and she said, "She was eighty in those days, um, Miles. Um, you know." I Odd noises, but that was a special noise, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Mother, you got it in one. <laughs> but it has, you know, um, the Christchurch Town Hall, has, as you all know, has an a, a, a extraordinary reputation as, as a... Um, uh, it's been the forerunner, as you've heard, of uh, all the work of Harold Marshall leading up to the uh, um, great French concert hall. But just um, picking up on, on some of the, the dollars and cents, you know, because um, tragically we do have to talk about, you know, money in these circumstances. Um, it, the, the insurance cover for the uh, town all, hall in terms of replacement value, which does seem to be rather extraordinary low amount compared to the numbers we're looking at, 68.924 um, million. Um, but if we don't repair it, then the most that we can get from the insurance is 32.44 um, million because that's the indemnity cover. Yep. So if we build somewhere else, then actually the amount of the contribution from insurance is significant. Well, it's almost halved. Yep. Well, it is halved. It's more than mm. halved. Mm. So that would be a factor that you'd want to take into account as well. Yes. Mm. Uh, Glenn. Thank you, and thank you for this. Could you please tell us a bit about the, um, the importance of the integration of the, of the whole, of the town hall, uh, Simon? So the importance of, of keeping it, it all together in terms of its original integrity. Well, um, the building suffered very little damage in the building itself. It was the ground that moved. I mean, you, um, you go into it, uh, as probably some many, many of you did, and um, you really couldn't see any damage. It went down about so far in, in one at one side, but the the real problem was that the ground, all the ground between the town hall and the and the river, had moved and sunk. So the, the, so much of the cost is in the in the strength that the the. Uh, basic structure itself. I mean, you go into it and you think, well, what's damage? So it actually survived the earthquake extraordinarily well. Yep. I guess my question is more along the lines of the importance of keeping it all together, because I heard you say before um, it's built as one integrated structure, so you can't really chop off bits <laughs> and that it, in fact, loses its... Um, no, it, it would be a tragedy just to, for instance, to retain the main auditorium alone with the um, uh, circulation space around it. One, one, I mean, one of the um, pleasures of the town hall um, is those spaces to circulate in before and, um, around the town hall and to the James Hay and to the Limes Room and so on uh, at three levels. It, it's, Take all that away and just have a foyer um, reduces the whole uh, design considerably. Uh, Jamie? 
Thanks. Um, we're, we're fortunate to have all people make deputations, but I think we're very humbled to be in the presence of two outstanding gentlemen in Christchurch who have made a huge con contribution. So thank you for being here and speaking to this. Um, I, I want to ask you a question just around, and it follows on from Glenn, with form and function, and there's no one better qualified than both of you two to ask this. Over time, we learned from the people that operated um, the town hall that the cascading levels, for instance, in Boaters Restaurant, wasn't ideal for holding functions, just that people would tend to gravitate on one level. Um, what would your view be with respect to the uh, integrity of the heritage and in the original design to perhaps uh, make modifications or correct what didn't work so well in the past from what we <coughs> learned as time went on, or would that ruin what was actually quite special originally? So it's around form versus function. I can't hear Sorry, I, we can't hear you. <laughs> I can't hear that, I'm sorry. The acoustics oh. are terrible in this place. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get one of those donuts for the acoustics. But what Jamie's saying is, is that, you know, if, if, the, if there were elements of the building that didn't work before, and he used the example of boaters being on the two levels, um, you know, would it affect the integrity of the building if we changed the purpose, you know, repurposed aspects of the building um, in order to retain the whole of the building, but to... Um, use it for different purposes. Well, and maybe um, fix what didn't work. Yes. Um, um, the James Hayes can be can be criticised for um, uh, not being good for for music, which it wasn't designed for. It wasn't designed no. for that. No. It was designed for um, for speech. But um, it can be, and there's a design has been done for already. Mm. It can be very uh, easily modified. Mm. Uh, and um, <coughs> Harold Marshall and his team has been involved in that um, to make it perfectly appropriate for uh, um, musical events. Mm. <coughs> but I think that Jamie was talking about other parts of the building as well. Yeah, you know, a, a, a the, specific the example restaurant, would be. Boaters Restaurant being on the two levels in terms of a restaurant facility, you know, and I, I, I thought the same was the true of the Limes Room upstairs, that you know, in terms, it was just such a waste having that beautiful view completely cut off, um, you know. I guess there has been an argument that a key element or a key heritage element of Boaters Restaurant, for example, was the cascading levels. However, from a functional point of view, it, it, um, it had its the challenges. The restaurant was never um, successfully used. Um, previous management were really bo weren't bothered with it. I mean, they reduced it to... A, a training ground and so on. And, um, uh, basically, the management of the town hall over a number of years wasn't interested in running a restaurant, and it, uh, I think it was sadly neglected. But um, maybe councils aren't very good at running restaurants. <laughs> of course, it was competing with the Park Royal alongside, which was, was a pretty tough, uh, tough deal. Yeah. So would you be amenable to the levels perhaps changing or key heritage elements slightly being altered to make it more functional with what we've well, learned in yes, modern times? Well, yes, the levels of the uh, restaurant are to be changed. And it, um, I don't know I'm exactly I what think the that, that's actually already been, uh, been done. As part of the, the design for the remodel. restoration. Mm. I mean, not the, um, as part of the work that was being done before the earthquakes? No, 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 it's post earthquake, I think. Oh, okay. So a design, some design work's been done in that regard. No, I didn't know that. Well, we were told that anyway. we couldn't change it because it was going open up to RMA risk around some of the Category One heritage um, issues. Or the, oh. the, the reconstruction of the town hall involves um, the complete replacement of the uh, air conditioning system. Mm. Um, Interestingly enough, um, there were complaints quite rightly in the, the James Hay of the um, uh, Limes Room. Um, it, it overheated and so on. And um, when we um, and eventually it was air, air conditioned, and there, at the time there were complaints well, why wasn't this um, air conditioned in the original brief? And um, so we checked back to the brief for the town hall. And the only reference to um, uh, air conditioning was um, what that the town hall, that the auditorium shall be 
shall be heated and ventilated, full stop. Mm. <coughs> Early days. I Early think. days. <laughs> but uh, it, it has been and will be superbly upgraded. Yeah. All right. Look, thank you very much for your for your time. That's um, fantastic. And as Jamie oh, said, for such an inept it, presentation. No, no, no. As <laughs> Jamie said, it's just an honour. Old to, age gets it's one an honour to have you here. <laughs> it really is. Thank you. And um, Jessica Heller.